we made this. Welcome to the Starlight Ballroom. Hey. Welcome to Shipwrecked and Comatose, a Red Dwarf podcast only on the We Made This Podcast Network. I am your host, Matt Latham, and as you probably guessed, or if you can read what's on your podcast app, this is a special, which makes Mark happy, and to make me happy, it's a British Empire special. I am here with the world's most knowledgeable Red Dwarf fan ever, Mr. Tony Black. <laughs> How are you doing, Tony? <laughs> I'm all right. Actually, I have been talking about Red Dwarf, which has caused a great deal of hilarity amongst the uh, shipwrecked and comatose community on my podcast. You have been watching my British sitcoms podcast. We've got a a subscription tier called extra laughs. And on there, we talked about the possible return of red dwarf. However, however, the caveat here is that I am, I do that podcast with somebody who has actually worked on red dwarf. So he knows his stuff. (laughs) I was just asking questions. I promise I wasn't actually talking about the show that I've never really properly fully seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at some yeah, I'm pretty sure at some point you will probably have to sit you down and force you to watch this show. So no, uh, I, no, I will. No, in fact that's part of what we talked about was that if it's gonna be coming back again in with another series or whatever, this is a perfect opportunity. Absolutely perfect opportunity. So it, once I know that that's coming, I'm gonna go, right, this is it now. This is the time. This is the time. At which point you'll probably never invite me back onto this podcast again, you know? So <laughs> it'll, it'll work out quite well, won't it? Well, to be fair, to be fair, Tony, you've you've only got you've only got what this episode and two more of a of your minimum commitment left to do. So uh, we're get we're getting yeah. really close to the end of Britus now, which is yeah amazing. I mean, and we get and we're getting to series five, and then mm. and then there's two more series which are going to be a conversation. Um, <laughs> but we are <laughs> yeah, season series six and seven, yeah, um, but. Don't get yeah, ahead but, of yourself. Yeah, but uh, we're going to talk about that. But talking about head of cells, again, head of cells, I've always made reference to saying that there are some series that I'm really looking forward to. And I felt, I think I remember saying that I really felt Series 4 was probably one of its more consistent series. It, but then um, it kind of hint, there's kind of like ideas that are slightly before its time in terms of structuring plots, in terms of serialization. There's some like character stuff. There's some very kind of ugly traps and the characterization of british falls into um it kind of it never kind of knew what it wanted to do in terms of the relationship with laura um and it just felt felt like the show was like 96 percent of what it could be um and then we get to series five and series (laughs) five series five i think is the one I think I remember quite vividly watching when it first aired. Right. Um, I can definitely remember this, because this was in 1994, I believe. Yes. Um, yep, so the first episode of this aired on the 31st of October, and it pretty much went all the way until the, no- the last day aired on the 19th. And then we have a Christmas special. Which I, I kind of want to talk, we'll talk about that separately. Um, I am hoping you have watched the Christmas special. Uh, is that the the one where? Well, okay, spoilers ahead of time, just in case. All right, but is that the one where it's partly set in the future? Yeah, it's set in nineteen. It's set in twenty nineteen. Well, well, well the, the past yeah. for us. But yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that that was a Christmas special when I watched it. That's okay, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, because the say tonight, it's actually an eight episode series, and then like the Christmas special that was aired later on. Later on, okay, okay. So we're on the because. A bit, a bit of our conversation is kind of very dependent on that, and if you hadn't watched it, um, yeah, shit. But <laughs> thankfully, we, thankfully, you have done the homework. I have, I have <laughs> done all the homework. Yes, yes, yes. So, series five. Is, so it's say, as I said, it's the one I've been looking forward to the most. It's the one I've got vivid memories of. Um, it's the one that intru- that introduces Europe. It also is the one where it's the most serialized the show's ever been to this point, and I think actually probably one of its strongest series actually, actually quite stronger than series four in terms of plotting in and how it balances out its cast based on the discussions that we've had before if i must say if anyone's listened to this for the first time i think to save time i don't want to repeat a lot of stuff that we've said listen to the first four first because i think a lot of the stuff that we're talking about kind of 
builds on some of the st- some of the frustrations we had with early shows. But this overall, is a series. This is a series of podcasts, like them. You know, yes. we should start from the very beginning. Series one, exactly, exactly. Yes, but overall, I know. Overall, I was kind of excited to look at this one, and for the most part, quite enjoyed it. Um, what about yourself? What was your initial thoughts on this? I liked it. I think it got better as the season went along really i think i think at the at the beginning i don't know if it was particularly good at the start of series 5 it has a couple of slightly wobbly episodes but then i think when you start getting into the middle to the later part i think it probably turns around the point of the episode the boss um and then it then i i quite enjoy, i i enjoyed the last four or five quite a bit actually um so yeah i i don't know i mean is it as strong as the last series i think probably it's on a par i think it just in simply for the fact that it actually does have real plot and character development and i'm sure we will get into this but it is essentially an ending <laughs> it, 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 it is the conclusion of the show basically yeah. um yeah there just happens to be another 15 episodes or whatever to come um but uh yeah th- on that basis it's it's good you know yeah you mess you messaged me i think after watching this going going lay them how the flipping head do they have two more series after this <laughs> they i mean they pretty, yeah because we'll they, they pretty they pretty much have their own sleeping in light if to make a babylon 5 comparison uh, they do an ep- they an ep- do yeah uh, an episode of tv i've not actually seen but no kind of what you mean but um in my in my head in my head for something that i have watched it, it feels like the last third of the final series of ds9 where mm-hmm. it suddenly mm-hmm. just where it suddenly went balls to the wall serialized more or less building up to an ending and i mean they, they the creators didn't actually listen to us listen to couldn't have listened to our podcasts from the future unless they had time machines but one of the thing one of the criticisms i think we had you don't know never, who knows? Don't discount anything, lay them, especially in the world of the British Empire. <laughs> Almost anything can happen. Let's face it. <laughs> yes, yes, we'll get we'll get to that because the, yeah. we'll get to that because there's an, <laughs> because of the episode that I've been wanting to talk about for the last five episodes we've been doing this. Um, <laughs> but I think, yeah, but I think particularly, and I think we notice this particularly with modern comedies or modern American comedies. Again, I'm thinking of the Greg Daniels, Mike Sher thing. So, because we've, we've, we've talked about the US office and everything, but one of the things that they've often done is because things are slightly more serialized, we've kind of serialized with them. It feels like as plots are building through, the an, an ensemble kind of fits in to certain bits and kind of drifts in and out to the point where even though you've got standalone plots, ongoing storylines and development of those characters are more naturally inputted in where they want to be. So where you have, so you, so for the first few episodes, you don't really have much of Tim at all, but then there's, but then I think as the character, as kind of Gavin's character gets quite a good chunk of development, um, like his role in his kind of relationship with Gavin affects kind of, kind of has ramifications that on like honor stuff. And there's some nice, really good, strong continuity. Um, throughout those which is kind of which pays pays off quite well and i feel as if the balance of character is a lot better this time I, I, i'm not do you, would you agree with that or not or no i think so i think you know there's still a couple of characters who get a bit shortchanged throughout this but and that's always going to be the way with the british empire i think yeah i think on the whole there is you know they give carol a little bit more to do for one thing which is good you know she gets a little bit more you they they yeah I, I think the balance is a little better yeah amongst most of them really mm-hmm. the, the, the one the one really I, that struck out to me as having nothing to do that they could have absolutely done more with is julie the secretary like yeah but she's she, busy she, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true that's true yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm yeah. busy yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah uh, but you know that they're, they're on the whole yeah decent balance so i think as we i think as we'll as we do last time, I think we'll we'll go, probably go episode by episode. So we've got nine of them this time. Um, <laughs> so, mm. so yeah. So we begin with so we begin with the the old old story, which is basically songs of praise 
going to the right. newly rebuilt, newly rebuilt uh, Whitby New Bree, Whitby Leisure Centre. Whitby and New Town Leisure Centre. Nib- yeah, it's something like to do with that. Whitby New Town Leisure Centre. <laughs> Says the man the who's the, most, the, the biggest British Empire fan I think I've ever met in my life, and he can't pronounce the name of the Leisure <laughs> Centre. <laughs> yeah, but the, so Songs of Praise turn up to the Leisure Centre, and after rebuilt, after kind of being destroyed, and yep. so, yeah, so Songs of Praise. You just got to go I mean, with that, really, haven't you? You have just got to go yeah. with the fact that you know they've had the money, the funding. You know, it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> as it yeah. was before like it's yeah. they've not even given it a redesign like it's exactly the same um it's like yeah. okay fine yeah um british is seen as a hero for kind of rescuing those kids from the end of the last series mm-hmm. uh, but then but then again things go back to normal where british like gets really anal about what toilets people use um mm. there's there's a rogue emu that uh <laughs> fires off um and an ongoing kind of plot which Involving Councillor Druggett about um, mm. about a job offer um, for the European Union in Brussels, which um, hasn't dated at all in twenty twenty three. The European Commissioner for Leisure is the is yes. the title, the job role. And back in the day, where you know, oh, everyone loved the EU. Wasn't the EU great? Oh, we'll be in the EU forever! Yay! To be fair, if they were ever going to do a British Empire reboot, I think in the post Brexit era. Mm. That would be very, very interesting, actually, because you could get into a lot of the, uh, you know, the funding cuts and Britis being a fun- the, just the, you could get a lot out of that, I think. But yes, um, sending him off to the EU. Is, I mean, it, is it is it one of those things where it's a bit far fetched in that he would? He's, I mean, as far as we know, he's just he's just a leisure centre manager, really. I mean, it feels like one of those things where Druggett has used his pull, uh, and he mm-hmm. must have fairly sizable pull if he can get him. A job like this i mean that's quite a big <laughs> job like this guy's just a local councillor i mean who does he know does he know the prime minister <laughs> like, yeah. has he has he called up but john major they... at the time and got john we need to get rid of this guy <laughs> then again then again though i think drug it might all drug it has to say was do you want to get rid do you want to get gordon british out of the country and there's probably quite a few people considering of the kind of like considering the ongoing joke that people may have already known about know about britis like yeah, to the maybe. point that to the point that if they probably would, they probably would have had a cameo from John Major going, uh, <laughs> like John Major, just like looking really surprised at the mention of Britus, and he goes, yeah. "Hey, do you want to?" Get... And drug it going, "Do you want to get rid of him?" And then John Major going, "I'm listening." <laughs> <And they're> just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But to I mean, I'm surprised they didn't, considering this is like the height of Britus, um, popularity. Well, I think. Yeah, but, yeah, uh... it's true. But... They should have got Sebastian Kobach. That's what they should have done. Yeah, but, they, but they, then again, they got Pam Rhodes playing herself. They so, do. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. I. I. I mean, there's none. No episodes of this I. I hated or disliked. So um, I. I quite. I. I found this one okay. I think there are. As I said better episodes later on, but I think mm. the. I think this kind of reminds you of the absurdity of the show. I mean, there's a bit. I mean, <laughs> I think like the deliberately. Very the deliberately fake Aust- uh, emu. Head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... yeah. <laughs> so uh... it's all it's all very it's all very standard, you know, si- slightly zany sitcom stuff. But then, like you say, with that plot thread dangled in, it's okay. It's it's fine. It's all right. It's not the best episode of the series of the series or the season. It's probably not the worst either. Hmm. But um, yeah. But I think yeah. So as a an introduction, I mean, there is the kind of. I'm, I, I admit I did really quite like the, the kind of gag of the Emu dragging Britus through literal shit, <laughs> 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 yeah. which I thought quite funny. Um, but yeah, so we get to, yeah, so we move on to episode two, which is Blind Devotion, which ha- which kind of has the kind of slightly ill-judged ongoing character thing of Britus's dislike of Colin. Depend, even though yeah. Colin is pretty much the biggest cheerleader for and like biggest supporter and ad, like admirer of Britis. Yeah, so yeah, and basically Britis has been trying to fire Colin. And I think this is episode, this is an episode which I think highlights, I think gives Mike Burns a lot to do. And I think, I think kind of Mike Burns sometimes, I think he's kind of just underneath Pippa Hayward and Harriet Thorpe in terms of 
the MVP rankings because I do I've always always had a soft spot for Colin as a character and I think mm. this is kind of it doesn't turn you against Britus I think but I think you're immediately on the side of Colin I think throughout all this and it the episode kind of shows you that hang on you, you might be slightly you might come across as inept or weird but Colin has a very specific purpose and it kind of re it kind of might turn it gets him out of the assistant manager role and into what i've always assumed he was um the kind of caretaker who does all the the jobs no one wants to do mm, mm. yeah no totally I, I i didn't like the this this one particularly because i think that was it was unnecessarily cruel of britus here like yes okay colin's always annoyed him but it's like you say no manager of that place would be able to deny how hard Colin works and how he, you know, I mean, the the show, I'm surprised the show has never like done, has not done more Star Trek gags because he is like the, he is like Scotty in the engine room, you know, keeping the place going. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it feels like they should have done more gags like that, really. But, you know, he is quite a, a central part of the functioning of that leisure center as all, you know, as, as puss ridden and, you know, ghoulish to look at as he is. So I don't really buy that you'd want to get rid of him in a way, you know? And it, it, feels, it feels like a contrivance just to be able to have, you know, put Gavin in a, a difficult position. And, you know, that, I, I, did li- I do like all that stuff throughout this series. And they do a little bit more with it later. You know, the idea of Gavin having to, you know, be in that position where he has to be a bit boss-like because he's absolutely not suited to it. You know, he's... he's, a, yeah. he's <laughs> yeah. If any, if anything, it would be Tim who'd be more likely to be able to do that because he can be a bit more cutthroat. Whereas Gavin's a bit more like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. You know, like, <laughs> so, but that's the, that's the comedy of it because Britus is such a, now, Gavin, you can go and sack him. Oh, I just, you know, whereas Gavin's like, oh, God. Uh. So that's where the comedy comes. But that, so that, that works. But I think, mm, I, I, I think it was just a bit cruel, to be fair. Yeah, I, I, but... I think it's like a very consistent trait of Britus, though, that I think the more the, pe- the people that actually like him, I think he doesn't really have time for. He seems to be yeah. more into people that dislike him. And I think, the, mm. I mean, I think the only kind of exception to that is the very weird relationship he has with Laura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, I, I mean, I think I, 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 I did kind of like the some of the gags in this. Um, I think there's the kind of undercurrent of dark comedies in there because I. I did actually really enjoy um, a blind Colin trying to be a lifeguard and just wha- is knocking people out with a massive pole, trying to rescue people, yeah. and just like <laughs> causing massive concussion. Um, and like, yeah, and and for a, and for a series, it has to be quite has a quite a low body count actually. But uh, um, <laughs> yeah, when you have to say that about about a nineties British sitcom, that's quite a low body count actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shows you how unusual it is. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, but again, I think in terms of we're still in the setup of stuff that pays off later on. Yeah, it's not probably it's not it's not the best use of Britus. I think it's considering of of and again, it's probably it, it links back to perhaps some slight inconsistency of the character that we've noted in the past. Yeah, the but it does have one of my favourite lines of the series of the series so far, which is uh, basically emergency toilet procedure green, which. <laughs> mm. Mm. which i, I yeah it's just like a random phrase that i just kind of just love but uh, <laughs> in terms of i mean so we get to episode three which is brussels calling which i read my notes on my handwritten notes that i have here it's the, it's the least it's the least that i have now i don't mm. know whether it's because i don't have much to say or whether i was engrossed in it i can't remember i did watch this episode about a week and a half ago but th- th- this is the one i think again i think kind of emphasizes kind of Brits as a character in the fact that he's constantly calling to the point that whenever the phone goes off, people immediately know it's him rather than mm. actually people find to the center and stuff. Uh, so he's in Brussels, um, like just on the phone managing from, managing from, uh, from thousands, hundreds of miles away. But then we also kind of get the fact that we get kind of manic Helen and kind of just kind of revisiting character tropes, which, I think, we, as we discussed in the past, I don't know if are the right calls because she basically ends up cheating on Brits again. Yeah, uh, this this was this was the bit in this one that made me go, "What?" Because uh, uh, we just the thing is, to be fair, right? The, what we've got to accept with this show, and I think this is, if I'm honest, and I know I know how much you love this show, and I get it, 
But this is why I I wouldn't put it on any kind of great list of shows for me because one of the th- one of the things that aside from the fact I don't find it massively funny half the time, but the other thing is that the the characterization so often is completely all over the place for certain people, and we've talked about this in some of the other series where they'll suddenly go down a weird you know does Britus and Laura lo- do Britus and Laura love each other and then suddenly oh her uh, her her american ex husband she didn't want to know he's back and then suddenly it's oh okay the, there aren't many consistent character beats throughout this show and they they seem to just go wherever they want to for when, for the purposes of a gag and I, and I, and Helen is a great example of that because this felt very much like a first or second series plot line for Helen where she just casually goes off and shags this guy. And it's a bit like, okay, she, yeah, she's, she's, she's a bit mad, right? And she always has been, but what, what a, a great comedies can do both. Great comedies can set up a really brilliant gag, but, but either the characterization is consistent or characters grow and develop. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen completely in Britus, but I'm saying it doesn't happen enough. And then you end up with an episode like this where, this is probably the weakest one I, I, I'm going to venture, actually. Because, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a simple of this series, because it's a simple setup, and it's a very Faulty Towers-ish idea that he, you know, he's trying to manage the centre when he's off, you know, and, it, and it's all going crazy when he, around it. But it, it, it doesn't... It, 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 that, those kind of things really irritate me, because it, it, it's, a, it's not consistent. And, it's, and I think comedy doesn't have a free pass to be inconsistent for me you know that you wouldn't you, you can't get away with that in drama but equally great comedy can't d- does it anyway you know and and so i i, I was dis- disappointed by that plot line because it's really it doesn't fit where the show is now which is what yeah. you just said essentially yeah i think yeah i agree with that i mean annoyingly 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 just kind of it's used though uh it's used quite well to set up a pl- the plot for the next episode, which I think, which is actually one a lot better. It's just annoying of what it's called, what it's what it's setting up. I, I I I will admit I did quite I did quite like the idea that um, Helen was accidentally well, air quotes accidentally almost tries to run over a, one of her students' kids' teachers, yeah. and then but I I do quite like the fact the teacher is actually in the center is assuming that she's trying to kill him again. Yeah yeah yeah. No that that's okay. That's silly. You know that's a silly. I ain't got a problem with that as such, but it's, yeah, the other stuff. I completely, yeah, I, I agree with you on that bit. But I, I think if we move to The Lies Have It, which is episode four, because um, that kind, good, cause good pun, kind of... Good pun title, incidentally. Yeah. That's a good pun of a title, I yeah. think. Yeah, because basically the affair, the affair is pretty much like, caught, is, what, is basically the setup for a lot of the ongoing kind of jokes. And I actually, I did, I really quite like this one. Um, I think... The kind of the the growing uh, the kind of the lie of Carol's birthday, um, of like not actually happening, but apparently is happening to try and cover up Helen's affair. I think mm. I, I I really appreciate it that it built up. I'm, again, it might have been better off being something else, but rather than kind of having an affair. But I really quite liked how this was how different characters reacted in their own way. Like again, again, like sympathy for Colin who goes like, "Oh, I wasn't invited to this." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This fictional party. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That, but that's that's all like a good that. setup, actually. Uh, you know, actually having to invent something for the purpose. Of, yeah, that, that, that's a good comic, comic idea, definitely. You know, and yeah, look, yeah. I, I'm not super, a super fan of, of the reason behind it, but yes, it's a good comic setup. And this one, actually, it has quite a few things going on, doesn't it? It's quite, you know, it's got various stuff like the Laura's husband's back. You know, Tim's finding out Gavin's studying management, all this. So there's, there's, there are plot developments happening as well as the adultery stuff in, in the yeah. mix of the episode in, in a more specific plot driven way than previous series have done. Mm-hmm. I would say this is an example of that. Yeah. And I think, and again, there's damage to the building. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, I think this also sees the return of um, Laura's husband, Michael and, I know, yeah, we've I know we've not been particularly fans of the character itself, but I think he's worked well here uh, as a kind of foil. I think he's like mm-hmm. he's just like he's more try. He's more deliberately. I think he's here just to deliberately wind up Britus. Um, yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think Brutus's distrust of him immediately <laughs> makes him believe that he's having an affair with Laura rather than yeah. Helen having an affair. And I, I do, I, I really quite like the building up stuff, and I quite like the set, setting up of things playing off. I mean, I think this is the episode I think we where Tim makes fun of Gavin's tie, and it's the same. And then Gavin is wearing the same tie in later episodes, mm. um, which I, I remember making a note of. And it's that kind of oh, nice well attention spotted. to detail. It's that kind of attention to detail that kind of works really well and yeah and it kind of like builds on the kind of very low-key relationship kind of low-key relationship between gavin and tim which Mm. again again like eight nine year old me had no idea they were meant to be a couple (laughs) (laughs) yeah Um, but this series at least is making that a little bit more explicit you know in terms of what at them actually being together you know there, there there are moments in this series where it, it, there were certain, I can't quite remember the, when and where, but there are moments I noticed that it's more alluded to specifically that they are together in a way that maybe it hadn't been in previous series. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I agree with that. Um, it seems a lot more, yeah, it's a lot more, not out there, but it's more, it's apparent or if mm. it's less implicit again, but the idea being is that Brissett has no idea. He just can't read subtext. No, no. Um, again, again, we we have um, as f- with the like the damage to the center. There's the the builders. <laughs> mm. There's the nice ongoing gag with the builders, and just like British is interfering, pretty much gets them killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, which I think, which I think, considering some a scene in the last episode, I'm sup- right. I'm surprised doesn't come back to literally haunt Britis. Or mm. karma, karma doesn't come back and get him in the arse and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> it's just like the fact that the the series is still not afraid just to kill a bunch of people, including electrocute. Um, because originally, initially, because initially, I thought that the the gag was that it was just going to be that oh, they just the sign is stunned into silence. But then there's a bit where saying they've not left their van for it for hours and then haven't moved, and I'm like, oh crap, they've killed them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Halfway through the series, it's kind of series is not it's it's starting to reveal the hand it's playing in terms of what it wants to do with character development. Um, this is when Laura's this is when Laura's pregnancy is revealed, and mm. I think it's it, it's particularly here as well. This is the point where I was thinking, oh, hang on, they're starting because initially, because I know because Julius and John doesn't return for six and seven. No. Um, so I was like, and initially I was thinking, as I was watching this, I was like, oh, but did they know ahead of time that she wouldn't be back? Um, but the story, the, the behind the scenes story is a lot different, actually. But uh, we'll get, probably get to that, like, next episode when we cover Series 6. But um, I was like, oh, are they g- giving this stuff? But no, what's actually happening is that they're starting to lay the foundations to actually end the series. So they're starting to build, so and so, so they don't rush. So they're not rushing everything into one episode. And I really quite appreciate they're actually taking time to do that rather than perhaps just having an hour and a half episode to tie things up or a Christmas special that's going to be 50 minutes or something. But the That's actually slow... quite rare. That's actually quite rare for TV shows, particularly sitcoms, yeah. at, this, at this time anyway. You know, normally mm-hmm. it wouldn't work like that. You know, whether the, quite often they wouldn't have necessarily been planning the ending at all. You know, and it would just turn out, oh, we're going to end it. Or they get to the end and they, of a series and they go, okay, well, we won't do any more. You know, quite, sitcoms in the old days didn't operate in quite the same way unless it was very specifically planned. So, mm. yeah, th- this level of serialization, it feels in many ways much more modern. It's, it's not modern in terms of how it's necessarily made as such, but the idea is much more of a modern phenomenon, really. Yeah, and it kind, it's like it's rewarding people that stuck with the show, I think. So if if you if you've carried on watching or watching week to week, it's it's not it's a nice kind of building up to something and yeah yeah so like as as kind of Brit starts to wonder about his legacy after he leaves that's when he starts to look into Colin um look into Gavin as kind of management material and mm. yeah it's a nice kind of build building building up to that and carrying on from that um of of gavin's management potential we get to the start of the second half of the series which is the boss where britus <laughs> where britus try, makes gavin manager for a day mr yeah. wet um oh, i forgot what his surname is uh forgot what gavin's surname is um featherly for, 
I was going to say Weatherby, but then if it's yeah, it's Featherly. It's like there's a lot of similar sounding surnames. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Colin Weatherby, Gavin Featherly, right? Have I got that yeah. right? Yeah. I think. Are you so, googling? Yeah. Are you googling? <laughs> yeah, I'm on. Yeah, <laughs> Just need to play some like supermarket music while you're googling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's Gavin Featherly. Okay, yeah, Gavin Featherly. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, so it's Mr. Featherly, but and and basically Britus being the employee and <laughs> basically backseat driving or, or mm. kind of like emotionally manipulating um Gavin to the point where he, I'm surprised Gavin just doesn't punch Britus by the end of the episode. But <laughs> this but I think you said earlier that this, you felt like the series took a, a slight upswing after this episode. So was it was it this one you think did you quite like this one? I did, I did. I think this is one of the better ones of the series, season. Actually, I think I think it, it's a, it's a simple premise, you know, that he's putting Gavin in charge, um, and you know, it's a test in order to see. But he's basically following him around, going, "Oh, Gavin, you should do it this way." Oh no, don't you know? That's, a, that's funny. Like in that, you know, he's throwing him in these situations, which is which is consistently good. So I, I think it's just a well executed comic premise, really, throughout the episode. And there's other stuff going on. I mean, you've actually, I, I actually thought the, the, the subplot with Carol and the old guy, Gerald, was actually quite sweet <laughs> in a way, because it's like, yeah. she's just, she just wants to essentially have a family. And this is obviously something that will come in later with Colin in the series, in the season. But she, she just wants to have a family and have that security, you know? And even though there's the comedy of him being like about 80 years old, and he look, he's, you know, um, yeah. and, th- but he, and then, you know, he, he, he dies in, in one of the most, typically british mad ways of just <laughs> yeah bad, bad luck um but it was it was quite sweet really i thought that as well so you had a, you had that nice little b plot going on at the same time no this this is this was a, a really good one yeah i enjoyed this one yeah and again with the typical kind of escalation of story escalation of catastrophes that i think um to the point where gavin gets kind of poor, like poor gavin gets like gets kind of gets wind of British doing all this kind of stuff. So whenever co- so whenever people are saying, "Oh, there's so and so and so and so," which are actually happening. So there's like the, where Colin keeps saying, "Oh, there's someone who's trapped in a sun, uh, a, like one of the the sun beds," um, mm. <laughs> and like Gavin's like, "Oh, shut up, Colin!" It's, and just kind of, kind of dismisses it to the point where he, there's the gag of the woman being stretched out, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like completely yeah, fried yeah, yeah. And, and like and. <laughs> And then, and then I think, uh, and it kind of ends with like people get like getting really complaining and like threatening Gavin. Goes, who's the manager? And Bruce is like, oh, Mister we- Featherby. And I was like, ah, and then he gets like the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, again, the kind of dark comedy aspect of it, and yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, a lot of the, and I, there's there's kind of like a genuine like, I think there's a bit of the audience to go, oh, when the weight drops onto. Um, the the head of um, Carol's kind of suitor, Gerald. Yeah, Gerald. Yeah, and because I think there's a lot of audience sympathy for Carol, and yeah, no, yeah, we, we, definitely, yeah, yeah. And, and we and we've and we've said as well, um, we've sung Harriet Thorpe's praises a oh, lot, yeah. and a lot, and She's you can't help you can't help but like just have kind of feel sorry for her even more than Colin at times, Colin at times as well, um. But yeah, I think the boss was like the boss was generally really good at episode. And then mm. we move to pregnant, which Pre- with an exclamation mark, pregnant, pregnant. Which, <laughs> if anything, if anything, I think the suspension of disbelief gets tested here because I can't buy that Britus is that kind of ignorance that all the women in the in the the center are pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. The, the gag bit because because that gag i don't know there's something about that gag that didn't hit i think you have to accept that what the show does sometimes with britus is make him way too oblivious for his own good you know he's clearly an intelligent man like you know, yeah. he is um yes okay he's got no self-awareness whatsoever but he's not stupid and i think at times the show makes him see not see things that he absolutely would see for the purposes of comedy, which again is an inconsistency, and again is something that ma- means it stretches credulity in a way that, for me, takes the air out of the comedy. In a way, you know, it, ma- yeah. it makes it less funny for me, really, in those kind of situations. But 
I think I think it, it, this one is a, is a typically sort of it's quite an old fashioned comic plot, really. Oh, who's pregnant? Oh, you know, who's it going to be? You know, it, it's like it's it's like comedy soap opera in a way. And yeah. I think I think it was fine. It was okay, but it's not as it's not as entertaining a comic setup for me as something like The Boss was. What, there's a slight bad taste to that plot line as well because, um, like they they like, they kind of end up making Britain extremely transphobic. Um, yeah. Where when when he suddenly real when he suddenly thinks that Tim Tim isn't male and then basically thinks he's a threat and a predator or something and and that that kind of didn't really uh play off that well I think so yeah no. and. And and I think and I mean they they had something very similar I think in the first episode first episode where he where he kind of almost accuses Tim of being like a like a a perv as well mm. and it's 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 a trait that I kind of hoped the show had forgotten about and uh, unfortunately not but um, mm. yeah so a bit of nineties ick there just to borrow a phrase from Mark nineties <laughs> ick, yeah. There's plenty of that floating around, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, and that, and that's that's a, an example, isn't it, of where it just wouldn't be written that way these days, you know, for for good no. reasons. Also, into that, there's the whole kind, the weird kind of thing with Colin and Carol, a bit Colin, Colin and Carol, where Britis assumes that Colin took advantage of Car- Carol. Mm. There's that, which is very kind of very very weird. So like, there's a very like a very weird kind of like. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Is rape the right word? I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think probably, yeah. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, it's, yeah. I, I didn't want to get too, I didn't want really want to get too serious about it, but it's a very strange kind of story direction to go. But again, it's something that kind of, the show's kind of, Ill, like been ill advised, Ill advised decision to do something very similar in the past with the um, Carol and Helen mix up in series two over mm, the twins. Yeah. Uh, as well but Um, but these plot the thing is though and we've talked about this before but these plot lines they weren't looked at in the same way back then you know and it doesn't mm -hmm. i know it's not that long ago necessarily but it's long enough that you know acceptance of these kind of jokes has changed hugely in the last 10 15 20 Mm -hmm. years and so when you look back on this the darker aspects of these this kind of these kind of jokes about women being exploited are really clear now in a way that in the old days but then the old days the 90s but (laughs) but they are now they are the old days but then (laughs) but then um people just didn't look at it like that that's the that's the honest truth people a a lot of people some would have done but a lot of people just didn't look at it like look at it like that and people didn't have that awareness themselves to actually think oh shit this is not nice what it's kind of suggesting underneath so but you and you if if we it, we've said this before and it's an ongoing debate but if we if we stopped laughing at every comedy that had these issues we'd never watch anything before about 2010 <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what i mean so we we have you have to sort of separate the the, the age and the time and 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 that stuff i think yeah so i think yeah so that's kind of like kind of like again i think i don't think it's it's not a series of the british empire where something like has aged quite badly i think so it's it's that, that this is the episode mm. that that happens, and it's kind of weird, and it's like a bit of a shame as well because it kind of leads to kind of like a, a really quite sweet scene between Carol and Colin, where they kind of like have this really awkward conversation where like where they think that she's pregnant with his mm. children, and he's there, like, and he's and he's trying to be an honest, <laughs> honest man, and it's like, and again, I think it's the naivety and kind of naivety of Colin where <laughs> where he, he, he doesn't, he's not aware that he's. <laughs> that he's done what he's not actually done, um, but it's not yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. That's a, that, but then that's a callback. That's a callback to I think earlier in the series where he had waste in his garden and it's just causing kind of like hallucinations. Because mm. I think that's what blinded him in the uh, in the second episode. But um, mm. but then we get so we gear on to the final two episodes, and this is where the kind of the DS Nine esque serialization <laughs> really kicks I, in i know I, I know i talked about star trek jokes but like you're really hammering this one home <laughs> the comparison yeah. to ds9 <laughs> i never thought i'd hear britus being compar- compared to deep space Nine. <laughs> that's very good uh yeah a dr- drug it is garrick i think 
Yeah. No, Druggett does. <laughs> no, actually, Garrett is... Uh, no, Druggett is... Um, He's Ducat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this will mean nothing to most people listening to this. <laughs> Go and watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine, everyone. It's a good idea anyway, because it's a great show. Actually, I, I like to, I, I'm going to assume that quite a lot, there's a lot of crossover between Star Trek and Red Dwarf listeners, I think. Um, I hope. You'd hope so, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot this was a Red Dwarf podcast. Yes, that, is, that made... <laughs> I actually had. I genuinely had forgotten that then. So like, yes, that's a good point. Yeah, every, they will like science fiction. Yeah. Did you think you was on You Have Been Watching? I did. Many? I did. Mainly because we then aired them on You Have Been Watching a bit later. So like, I think I did. I think I'd forgotten. You know, sorry, Rob. Sorry, yeah. Rob, my co-host, Rob, because, you know, I should have remembered that. Never mind. You can't get the guess. <laughs> so... UXB is episode seven, where like there's an unexploded bomb. Uh, Brits about to leave to Brussels. Carol, Julie, and Linda have chances of happiness. Uh, there's pregnancies. There are plans to America. Um, there are th- there's the chance. There's like promotion opportunities, and of course, Brits gets cold feet about it, which threatens to derail everything. <laughs> so, what, so yeah, what do you, yeah. you think of this one? Um. No, I thought this was okay, this one. Yeah, I thought, you know, it's obviously then building up towards the end. Um, but no, I, I thought it was okay. I, I don't think I liked it as much as The Boss, but I think it's a good one. Um, I think it, I, I, I really, I found, I, I, I liked the the very opening moments where you, you see bombers in the war, <laughs> like going, <laughs> I thought that was fun. I know they don't do much with that, but it's like, it, it's that little level of, ingenuity in in the writing and that they're actually trying to think a little bit how, how do we how do we enter a story you know that um, you know that i don't know if you've watched have you watched the detectorists i haven't yet no that's on my list to do no the detectorists use use uses that quite a few times um, oh, okay. where they either they'll either open or close episodes or series of like kind of of like the backstory to things that they, oh, um, cool. they find that's in that good. show so yeah, I mean, it's only until you brought that up, I was like, oh yeah, I wonder if, I wonder if it probably wasn't, but there's a very kind of nice kind of contrast or like similarity in that style where you kind of open up of the origin of something that's found later on, which I think gives it a nice kind of epic feel, and also gives the centre another chance to like, oh crap, something's going to destroy the centre again. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, and uh, and a lot of comedies at this time they did do a lot of leaning back to the second world war i mean de- you, 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 your ds9 metaphors you know comparison is good here because that was all about the second world war that show that was obsessed with the second world war and this and this is you know a lot of comedies in this era did things like unexploded bombs or something about old old war people or whatever it was very much in the 90s in that consciousness of people the second looking back to the second world war so th- this makes sense as a, as a as a plot line an unexploded bomb um but then, but then I think I kind of wish it had done more with that in a way, like because because there's a lot of stuff going on here. You know, you've got the stuff with Carol and the guy from social services. You know, finally turning up. I mean, blimey, he should have been here years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you've got preparations for Julie for Julie's wedding. You've got like, like all stuff going on. You've got Helen. I did like the gag where Helen is determined not to go to Brussels until she finds out how much Gordon's going to get paid, <laughs> and she's like, oh. <laughs> okay um that's good that's more in keeping with the helen that i think should be characterized in that way yeah um slightly mercurial character she loves him but she's a bit crafty and mercurial that's the helen i'd rather see than the one who's shagging someone randomly but um but no i wish i kind of wish it had focused on the bomb a bit more really and done more with that than it does just do you know what i mean yeah i think interestingly enough and again, I can probably only speak to people who have rewatched it. The bomb, the bomb plot line, I think works if you're like me, having very vivid memories of the next episode. Uh, mm. To the point, well, yeah, because the next episode is the, is the episode I remember the most for like decades, um, for, for for reasons you can probably expect. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I couldn't remember exactly how things happened in that episode, and I thought they were setting that up in this one. So I was watching it going, oh, oh, okay, I didn't really... Because my memory of the show is that... My memory of the show is that I was... I often thought that... that the, I, I, I thought that the cliffhanger... I thought there was a cliffhanger where there wasn't one, and I I couldn't fully remember what which episode was what. Um, so I thought, oh, are they setting up... 
are they setting up um, what I think they're setting up in this one? Um, so what happens in the next episode is set up is due to the bomb and stuff. And there's a nice kind of fake out, uh, like a fake out of the whole thing where you're thinking the bomb's going to set something off that happens later on, but it doesn't. So again, that just might be me getting more entertainment from that, from a rewatch. Mm, no, I can see than... that. I can see the logic there. Yeah especially, yeah, especially in the vein of this all being an ongoing set of storylines. Yeah, you could, yeah. you could imagine how that would tie into the finale. Yeah. I think the show's kind of making fun of its own expense. So you've got like previous mm. series having the centre being destroyed, kind of being destroyed through um, all sorts of different ways. And I think it's a, it's a case of, oh, no, there's a bomb. It's going to cause more damage. It's going to blow up the centre. And I think the kind of joke is that it doesn't in the end. And I think that's perhaps the writers having it. It might just be a joke for the writers laughing at themselves more than anything. But I quite liked the idea that it kind of twisted on its head what the show's kind of done in the past, where it's like, oh, no, they've got to rebuild the centre again. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, then yeah, again, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then yeah. again, I can but, see that. Yeah. But then again, they end up doing it in the next episode anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah well yeah 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 <laughs> but you know i get it i get it that you think that again it would have been nicer to have a little bit of more self-awareness but i suppose there might be yeah i can see it i can see it maybe it's playing on its own history in a way yeah but um yeah but around that i mean aside from i really quite like the physical gags of mike burns carrying the bomb trying not to set it off and then get and then getting concussion again um and forgetting about it but um, yeah. but all the all, all the kind but it says the all the layering and setting up of character arcs. I think we Linda finally gets a character gets a character trait in that we find out that she wants to be the, the first female Brit- bishop of Canterbury. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, we, I'm assuming we, I'm assuming we haven't had one since this was aired, have we? There will be. I'd love still. to be sure. I don't believe so. I'd love to be sure. Um, and obviously female uh you know vicars and bishops etc have, have definitely got more common over the last 30 years but uh i don't know enough about the church of england to know for sure to be honest but probably not so it's it's uh, that's a little bit of a i suppose a forward thinking idea that that it's doing mm-hmm. you know um, yeah. it's actually actually trying to give her something to do at once for you know for, <laughs> right at the very end <laughs> give us give us something yeah, of definitely. note <laughs> yeah definitely yeah um, but yeah, I think it's like everything's all gearing up to like happy endings to the point where it's like, yeah, oh, okay. They seem to be are like, they are building up to the end of the show. So what's going to happen next? <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah. And then we get to the last day, which, which, and I'm genuinely surprised because this is, because I often thought the show went this outlandish earlier, but yeah, because um, if if this and the next episode were definitely the last episodes, then they would have gone on a kind of high because this is the episode that I've been hinting to for ages since we started, and I'm mm, I am mm. so, I've been so been. looking forward for years to get your reaction to this episode. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tony, what did you think of Britus dying and being chucked out of heaven for being too annoying? <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was great yeah i did i mean that it is the it feels like the summation of the show in that way really you know in in that <laughs> it reminded me actually of um the end of curb your enthusiasm series five and i don't know if you've seen that which appropriately series five they do i'm not saying there's any kind of inspiration from britus but they do a very similar thing where Larry David goes to heaven and he encounters his foul mouth mom and, you know, ends up, you know, meeting a couple of angels played by Dustin Hoffman and Sash Baron Cohen, actually quite funny. <laughs> um, and then he ends up going back because his time's not. So it's, it's for, for a kind of, and obviously in his case, he's, he's like a, a, an, a, an annoying misanthrope, but there's, there's almost a similarity in some ways between characters like that, like him and Britus, because they're both, they're both people who, everyone else around them gets constantly frustrated and annoyed by because they have a very singular view of how they want things to be done or how what they think should be done and the rules of how life should be you know larry david probably has more in common with victor meldrew in places although he's a lot harsher and victor meldrew is big softy really underneath it all but the, but that my point is that those kind of british 
he's in line with those characters in the sense that he's exactly the kind of person with he's got good intentions, but he'd go up there and he'd drive them mad with bureaucracy, yeah. and he'd tra- <laughs> and he'd drive them mad with oh well that oh well that system's a little bit outdated, isn't it, uh, St Michael? You could ch-, you know, so I totally get it, and I think it's a good comic. It's a good comic idea, and it's executed well. I think. I think the uh, the uh, the two angels are, <laughs> are really funny. You know, the, yeah, the, one of them's like, no, just get rid of him. Like, yeah. you know, don't mention that. He's got to go. <laughs> Oh, um, we've, we've we've made a mistake. We made a mistake. We need to uh, you're not yeah. here for another for another thirty, fifty years. Fifty, yeah, <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, fifty. Um, yeah, I thought that. I thought it was very funny. Yeah, it was. It was. What What did you think about the manner of his death then? Like, because that that was that was quite dark, really, and quite like it, it messed up, wasn't it? In that sense, and and the fact that then. You have, I mean, let's face it, it, it absolutely goes into the world of the supernatural in the very end when he's literally banging on his own coffin to get out, you know, like that's when it, yes. it absolutely tips over into the supernatural world. But w- what about his death? What do you make of that? Again, I mean, again, I've, the memory of Gordon Brissus being flattened by that water tank has stayed with me for years. The kind, the whole gag the gag of him being sent up that whole 30 now 50 years thing yeah that i mean <clears throat> it's been a good 15 20 years since i've seen this episode and in my head it it kind it is exactly how i remembered it um in terms of and so i always thought that it's it's in fitting with quite a lot of the show to quite the show it's kind of like the dark comedy that it focused quite a lot on death um it's it's resulting of again more damage to the center <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's <clears throat> inept it's kind of it's like not the ineptitude but perhaps him even though he's usually very anal and bu- bureaucratic and micromanaging to a degree it's there's there's often chances that when he's not micromanaging stuff that's what causes an issue and it's because he's not bothered about the tank or not focused on the tank that has caused that is like not noticing really about the fact that Carol's kind of extended the cupboard <laughs> into like a whole yeah. living space again, kind of almost leads almost leads to her getting into danger as well. Um, but as well, but I do think that it kind of sums up Britus as a character in that, yeah, good intentions just leading to bad mistakes happening. So, and the ultimate good intention being is that because of those mistakes that he's made and has an impact, he's actually saved someone's life. And we get the visual of that with like St. Peter putting all those, <laughs> pretty much, yeah, you've killed people, blah, blah, you've done this, you've annoyed people, this, 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 and this. And then suddenly, like Pandora's box is that one little kind of selfless act, which kind of means that he's kind of, he's like almost redeemed himself. In a way, but that, but he, but again, this being Brissus, he didn't know that he had to be redeemed, um, and I think that kind of is like in fitting with the kind of dark, almost dark comedy of the show as well as mm, mm. the character. So I, I thought it's quite fitting and kind of fitting that they did that. I don't know how many other shows could really get away with this and what happens with with Britus here. You know, I mean I know, I know they bring him back ultimately. But the the next show that really kills off its main character is the One Foot in the Grave to mention Victor Meldrew again, which happens about 5 years after this, 5 or 6 years after. And that's a definitive he's dead, you know, ending and deals with it in a in an even darker way to be fair with that show. Um and you know that that's a different style of doing it, but very few shows would kill off a main character, you know, in a comedy series. But, but I think when you've got a character, but I think when you've got a character like Britus, who is larger than life in, in a, in a way where so often he infuriates people, it's a different kind of larger than life to someone like Del Boy in Only Falls and Horses. You wouldn't kill off Del Boy because he's beloved, you know, I mean, he's, an, he's a lovable idiot, you know, you wouldn't kill off. Britus isn't a lovable idiot. You know, he is, he's, He's funny, and he's and he, I, I don't subscribe to the idea that he's an idiot at all. You know, I really don't think that. He's fastidious and he's bureaucratic and all these things, but he means well, you know, in what he does. And 
I, so I think to actually give him, you know, with Victor Meldrew, he gets a tragic death, really. And which, and in, in the in the vein of that show, it underscores what One Foot in the Grave was all about, which was that the world around Victor Meldrew is shit and people are shit constantly. <laughs> yeah. And he's so annoyed by the fact people are shit. That's what makes him grumpy. Whereas in uh, British Empire, it, I suppose it is quite a fitting idea that he would go down with the ship you know and that he would he would die trying to save other people you know he it, it is that analogy of the, it being him being a captain you know him being captain kirk if you've got like colin and scotty in the engine room you know he yeah. he's, he go he goes down with the ship essentially here and he saves in this case carol with a, on a little in a little <laughs> carol in that little car yeah <laughs> so funny um so, so I, I think it works, oddly enough, you know. But I think equally, you wouldn't have been able to do Victor Meldrew going up to uh, heaven and having a grumpy thing and then getting sent back. You wouldn't be able to do it in that show because it's a different tempo. Whereas with Britta's, it's always been hyper real. So I can buy the idea that it wouldn't stick and that he'd come back. And, and that you can just accept the fact that a man came back to life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you, have, you know, <laughs> which would actually be like world-renowned breaking news <laughs> in the real world that a man yeah. got out of his coffin and came back to life but in the world of britus it just it just is and i can i can accept that i th- yeah and i think i think it's like gradually seeing where higher up on the chain britus can annoy people so like uh, <laughs> god <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to the point That's that he, high. <laughs> he annoys the afterlife and as <laughs> as a potential ending to the show um i think that kind of works quite well and which leads to the kind of christmas like the kind of epilogue that we'll get so uh, so was was this can i ask a question was this the ending or did they always plan to do the christmas special which was that ending do you know I I can't get a definite answer from this. All I know is that I think all I know is that the because the the writers change from six and seven, so it's not the original writing ah, team. Okay. Um, and I I remember reading something a while ago, and I was trying to find it this morning, but I can't remember where I read it. Where there's an interview where he says that he can't. The writers kind of don't pretend that six and five, six and seven don't exist. Um. And with and I kind of agree with them because the I I have real issues with the the, the last episode, I the last episode, I don't like, um, of, of episode seven of course. Um, I think as well originally they was going to they weren't going to have him come back, um. So I don't because I think because of the show being really popular and the BBC wanting more episodes, they kind of tweet last minute, the last episode, mm. and mm. I think they wrote the Christmas special. Now, I as like a potential final episode. You know, it's 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 a okay. good eighteen months, I think, till series six. So I can't. If anyone know, if anyone, so I've tried to look for this, and I can't get a full definitive answer on this. I, if people are listening, that can probably direct me to kind of more conclusive um, stories on on this. Um, the only thing I do know is that I'm pretty sure that this was this is the last time I think. Um, the writers uh i think this is the last ones that andrew norris and richard fagan write mm, mm. um that's interesting so, yeah yeah because yeah, because uh, i think it does lead to a good a good ending but tick um i if they if they went with the he stays dead thing i don't know how you want to get the christmas special but uh yeah but the christmas special i think kind of works as a nice kind of epilogue to this which um is called in the beginning it was aired on the 27th so it was just after Christmas. So it was twenty seventh, the same year. So it was only a couple of weeks after this. So we set in two thousand twenty nineteen, where we see Laura living in Chicago with her son. Linda is a vicar. Gavin is a, is an is running for, as an MP. Um, he's still with Tim. Um, they and then they all kind of meet at this like fancy place to see good Britus, who's now, who's like ended up going to Europe. Um, he's like Sir yeah, no. Sir Gordon and Lady Britus now, aren't they? Yes, so yes. He's, he's presumably become like a ma- a major European commissioner figure who's like high in the British government or something like this. Yeah, um, but then he's kind, of, but kind of him and Helen are seemingly happy. Helen seems to be a lot better, and um, well, she's rich. Like, yeah, <laughs> she's going to be um, fine. <laughs> yeah, Carol, Carol's on Broadway as a singer. 
as like a singer. She's a dame as well. A isn't dame, she now? yeah. Dame Carol dame. Parkinson. Yeah, yeah. And we then get flashbacks to um, the early weeks of the cent- of the centre of 1989 when there was all snowed in. Continuity, there's plenty of continuity issues aside, because um, I'm pretty sure none of them could stand Britters at that point. Well, and also, also, was Julie wasn't there, was she? Yeah, because it was it's the, Andy. it was the original. Yeah, so was like, <laughs> that was the first thing that came into my mind. Well, Julie didn't work there. Like, where's the other woman? <laughs> but exactly. Yeah, nobody but, um, would have remembered her, would they? By that point, none of the, none of the none of the audience would have really been paying that much. This is the thing. Na- na- right? Okay. Nowadays, she would be have been brought back for this. That that character would have been in there, a hundred percent. This this is where th- television has changed. They would absolutely have made that continuity tether now, whereas back then they didn't even bother with that stuff. Yeah, uh, to be fair, it's been it's been like about five years. I'm pretty sure people would have forgotten or mm. not have watched the first series and forgotten and no, existed. I, I agree, and it, it's not a big deal. It doesn't make any difference. Like, and you're better off with having Judy there because she's a way better character and a way better actor. But the point being that if you want continuity properly done then <laughs> she should have been in there but there you go yeah very yeah very much but yeah so we just kind of get this kind of like kind of like kind of nice story where <laughs> kind of story where Britus is trying to control the staff and they kind of learn they kind of like kind of learn like learn a bit about each other and stuff which is kind of nice but then mean but then kind of clashes with how they feel about Britus for like the five years after <laughs> Because they all yeah. seem to be, because they all seem to want to meet up, because like want to meet up because of this um of this thing. Because I like thirty, like the thirtieth anniversary of them, like mm. stuck, stuck in the uh, center and stuff. Which, I mean, if anything, I, I if anything, it's Tim being there that throws me. Um, Tim would probably like just not want to go. Um, yeah, I I didn't buy that book at all. Really, I mean, I yeah. I, under- I understand it as a reason to get them together in the future, but. I, I didn't, I was like, no, I don't get, I don't buy the idea that they all meet up. You know, if, you, if you're going to go with the fact as well that Laura goes back to America, right, at the end of series five, and she's not in series six and seven, presume, well, I'm guessing it's because Julius St. John didn't want to come back, but presumably also you can, lo- you can go with it in the mindset that she goes off to America with that guy, she has a baby, she raises that, that boy, or those kids, whatever, right? So I, I, I can appreciate why she wouldn't be back, right, in the sixth and seventh series. But is she really flying over from America every year to come and do this for the next 20 odd years? Yeah. Also, how does her son, who is well into his 20s, presumably by this point, how does he not know any of this? Like, how? because he, he's asking her, she's telling him the story of how, and he's like, mate, your mum's been doing this every year on New Year's Eve <laughs> since you were a kid. How do you not know about this? So there's lots of things where I'm a bit like, no, I don't buy it. I don't buy yeah. it at all, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, I don't really kind of buy, buy that at all. But I think thematically... But the, joke, it's not, it, but the joke isn't about that, is it? The joke is, yeah. is that it's all about seeing them in that future environment, isn't it? And seeing how they've changed, basically. So Yeah, and I think thematically as well, it's kind of a nice kind of topping to the character. So like they're all like saying that, mm. again, again, he gets things wrong, but he's always got good intentions. And I think the story that's being told is that Britus is trying to get people through a kind of hardship and doing a really bad job, but it's mm. like an F for attainment, but A plus for effort. Um, mm. Well, it ends on a really hopeful, positive note, really, doesn't it? I mean, it ends with them all toasting Britus, you yeah. know? And if, if you class that as, as the ending, which I think for many people, and including the writers, that's the ending, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got these other two, maybe slightly non-canonical series tacked onto the end, then um, it, it ends on that very rousing, hopeful note that, you know, they've all been really successful. I mean, and, and that's the other thing. You've got to really, that's a big thing to swallow. You know, I can understand Laura be, having loads of money and being super successful because she's married a billionaire or whatever he is. But Colin right, owning a Scottish castle, Carol being a, a dame of the theatre, like... You know, mm. I, I, maybe Jill is Archbishop of Canterbury, maybe Jill, at a push because she's gone through the training and she's, you know, but I'm a bit like, what, how are all these other people like who were living and working in a shitty little <laughs> centre in the middle of, you know, like, how have they, how are they now this rich and successful? I was a bit like, well, I get that maybe the idea of Britus uh, is that he was trying to condition them to be better versions of themselves and be successful. But I'm a bit like, 
I mean, it's only been, tw- you know, 20 odd years. I don't, I don't know if that would really have happened. That was, mm. that was the bit where I was a bit like, okay, I, I'm enjoying the fun of it where they're all in these different places and that. That's quite fun. You know, and that's the, the sleeping in light analogy with Babylon 5. You know, that's something sci-fi fans listening, you might know the connection there in terms of it being the far future and they're all in different places. But I don't know. I, th- I thought as a message, it's a nice one, but I don't really believe that they'd all have done this well. But you, but, but you believe that a man can go to heaven and get thrown out for being really anal and bureaucratic? Yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But people yeah, being point. rich, but people be getting rich for doing, being rich working in a leather centre in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my limit. How- what did you think of how they portrayed 2019 as well? Like, they try to do a little bit of a futuristic car, don't they? A little yeah, bit, that, which is I think quite that's fun. The, <laughs> the car computer thing is something I've always remembered. And I was like, yeah, going, yeah, yeah. the yeah. car computer says we're there in ages. I'm like, actually, that bit's aged quite well because <laughs> I, bring, <laughs> I constantly use Google Maps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the equivalent, isn't it, of Google Maps and sat nav. Um, but they've always got all those, in those kind of things, all the cars have got slightly futuristic sounds in a way as don't. It's always that kind of thing going on, whereas as just sound like normal cars, really, for the most part, um, unless you've got a hybrid, maybe, and it's a bit more like that. But but yeah, I, 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 I like it, though. I do like it. I don't think it's as good as the last episode, this one. I think, I think it, it, it's fun, and I think it's a decent conclusion, but I think I prefer... And I think it's probably a better conclusion than the last day. I think him like it ending with him knocking on the coffin or whatever, or not coming back from heaven. I think I like this ending a little bit more actually. But, um, but yeah, I think I like the last episode a little bit more as a comic construct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think, but I think it kind of leaves the show with a kind of nice closer. Nothing too, well, say nothing too extravagant. Um, we probably. Not the best. Uh, well, apart from <laughs> the whole dying and stuff, but yeah, I think. No, I see what you mean, though. I see what you mean. Yeah, and I think it's a kind of like nice closer for the series. And then in February 1996, we get the start of two more, which I'm, I can't, I, I don't have much memory of six and seven, if I remember. Even though I do remember watching them, um, I do remember mm. episodes where there isn't Laura. Um, there's there's an episode in series seven I quite remember which sees them incorporate IT, um, which is one I can't remember. Right. And also the the I mean you've got no idea of how it ends, do you? No, no. Uh, yeah, don't spoil I, it. I, yeah, I, I <laughs> we'll I get there. Can, I cannot wait to talk about the last episode of this show um, because I think we're going to help because we're going to be referencing these two episodes again when we talk about it. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I'm very curious. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to hearing your reaction to that. So um, at some point, so it'll probably be early next year, I think, when we cover mm. Series 7, because we'll probably have another one of these late, next, late in the year, but then, mm. um, and then perhaps Series 7. <laughs> oh, I cannot mm. wait. I cannot wait. Um, <laughs> Me neither, actually. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm very curious because it, it's it's one of those things. I want, I want, what I want, and I don't want you to answer this now. But what I'm going to put out there is, I want to see whether or not the show jumps the shark a little bit at this point, and I want to see if it's gone past, if it's at a point now where other writers have come in and the BBC presumably have gone back and said it do, it's a good hit, it's a big hit, it's done, it's doing well. We don't, we we want more series. Like they're, they're all popular characters, etc. And you know, you because you, this is quite unusual in to end a show like this and very clearly end a show like this, and then suddenly within eighteen months it's back again. On a, in a dramatic, creative level, that's quite weird, actually. So, I'm quite, I'm very curious to see whether or not it just goes completely into territory where we'll be going, what on earth is this, or whether it's actually funny. It's actually funnier as a construct. I'm very curious. You know the answer. I don't. Do, don't tell me. <laughs> okay. You've been listening to. Don't Shirt tell and me. <laughs> don't tell me anything. I know you want to. Yeah. Don't tell me. Okay. So that was the series five <laughs> coverage <laughs> of uh, the British Empire. <laughs> you have been listening to Shirt and I have been your host, Matt Latham, and the guest has been Tony. Tony, if people want to find you and your multitude of different things, where can they find you? Uh, 
Well, I'd say um, thank you again, by the way, for having me on. And I would say the best place to get me is uh, on the well, best place to go is my link tree. OK, so if you go to uh, link, linktr.ee forward slash AJ Black Writer, you'll find links then to everything I'm doing all my Twitter, my Twitter, my Facebook pages, my books, my website, etc. All the, all the writing I'm doing, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It's all on there so uh, that's the best place to get me really yeah and if you want to follow me you can follow me under uh pick a disc on twitter or instagram and i'm not going to go through all the other stuff that involved in i'm pretty sure people listening to this podcast if you've listened to previous episodes you're probably sick to us mentioning we have all the podcasts so i'm not going to go <laughs> i'm not going to go too much into detail apart from that if um so if yeah if, if you if you know you know so <laughs> That's 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 very sinister. If you know, you know. You know. Like. <laughs> if you know, you know. You know. <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, so that's the end of series five. We've reached the end of an era. Um this is very much like reaching the end of series six of Red Dwarf. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens next. And I'm really looking forward to it. No spoilers. Shipperton Combs House isn't the only show that you find on we made this in a moment you'll probably hear a little trailer well, actually no you will hear a trailer because i can feel tiny staring daggers at me straight away um feel free to follow the we made this network feel free to check out you have been watching because if you're a fan of the british empire or red dwarf you might be a fan of british sitcoms so go and please follow that and Thank you. and um i look forward to perhaps later on i'm not sure when yet but definitely tiny will be back to talk about series six until then mm. <laughs> Shipwrecked and Comatose, a Red Dwarf podcast, was created and produced by Mark Adams and Kurt North. You can find us on Twitter at Red Dwarf Pod, and we are part of the We Made This Podcast Network, which can be found online at WeMadeThisPod.com or on Twitter at We Made This Pod. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Tony Black, co-host and producer of You Have Been Watching, a podcast all about British sitcoms. Myself and co-host Robert Turnbull take you on a range of Britcom subjects and shows in our discussions, including greats such as Faulty Towers. Basil, in, in the same way as, as David Brent and uh, Alan Partridge and Victor Meldrew, Basil works best when he is actually dealing with assholes lesser known curios such as 15 stories high there are all these kind of like gag setups being put in place uh, in that episode and then the the sort of the end like minute or so is basically the payoff to all of these gags and it's very very sitcom-y and even top tens such as sitcom theme tunes if we have to put composers of theme tunes in context for british sitcoms i think ronnie hazelhurst he's, he's possibly the john williams of I was just gonna say he is the, he is the John Williams yeah. of I think of, I think uh, he is British sitcom. We're available on all podcast platforms and on social media at YHB Watching Pod on Twitter and Facebook. So please subscribe, get in touch, and come and have a laugh with us. Yeah.